Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Mitochondria Mastery course. This is a course content sample video. The title here is The Important Role of Magnesium in Mitochondria Function. So magnesium is a very important mineral with regards to our overall health and critically important for mitochondrial function. So it's the second most abundant intracellular cation, the first actually being potassium, and the fourth, fourth most abundant cation overall in the human body. Now it turns out there is approximately 3,715 protein binding sites for magnesium that have been discovered so far. In many reports they actually talk at around 300, but it's clearly a lot more than that. So for example, magnesium is essential for a lot of different biochemical functions in our cells. It's important for glycolysis, for the metabolism of glucose. It's important for Krebs cycle activity, what's called beta oxidation, and then critically important for ion transport across cell membranes. So there are some other examples of magnesium and its function within our cells. So it helps in the regulation of DNA repair. It helps in what's called ribosome aggregation. So ribosomes are important for protein synthesis. It helps in mitochondrial function with regards to its volume, the ion composition, and most importantly, which I'll show you here shortly, is adenosine triphosphate stabilization. Also, it's involved in intracellular messaging system in how the cells work internally and then also communicate with other cells. So it turns out magnesium is critical for a lot of function with regards to stability, repair mechanisms, proper sequencing of information, and because of its unique physical characteristics, meaning its chemical characteristics, it has a broad range of biochemical activity. So deficiencies of magnesium, this is a short list here from mental confusion, depression, fatigue, anxiousness, for example, decreased appetite, to sleep problems, to muscle twitching, spasms, cramping, and much more. Now, if we look at a common periodic table of elements, we can see hydrogen is element one, and over here, on the right-hand side, we have helium as a noble gas is element two. It turns out it's all about in how an element responds or reacts is whether it maintains its orbital structure or loses certain electrons in various orbits. So for example, the elements on the left-hand side, for example, lithium, beryllium, sodium, magnesium, actually give up their outer shell electrons more easily than those on the right hand side of the periodic table um, because as these over here they're closer to the noble gases which have the sort of the optimal stable outer uh, orbital or what's called the valence orbital of eight electrons okay so with regards to magnesium it actually has two electrons in its outer shell now it wants eight to be maximally stable in its outer shell, but because of its electron configuration and things that get into the aspects of general chemistry that are sort of beyond this short discussion, it turns out that magnesium, because of its electron configuration of what's called 2A2, it readily gives up its valence electrons or its outer shell or outer orbit electrons easily to then carry a positive charge. So it's actually giving up a negative charge electrons, two of them. So it gives up this one here and this one here, and therefore it will then carry a positive charge. So in many regards, when you look at magnesium, same with calcium, for example, it has a plus two charge. Okay, so it's lost its two outer electrons. So what's called its ionization state is a plus or a plus two. In this case, 
and therefore it's called a cation. An anion is something that carries a negative charge. Okay, so it turns out that calcium also has a 2 plus, beryllium also has a 2 plus, and so does magnesium. So they're both 2 plus cations, which means they can bind to an anion that carries a negative charge as well. But what's interesting with regards to magnesium is what's called its ionic radius. Now notice beryllium's ionic radius is less than magnesium's, but magnesium's is less than calcium. So there's a lot of competition for calcium between calcium and magnesium in cellular systems. But because of magnesium's ionic radius plus its plus two charge, it acts in a very unique way within the cells. So ionized magnesium, a cation, okay, will coordinate with about six to seven molecules of water. Okay, whereas, for example, calcium or barium might only combine with one or two molecules of water. And so it turns out that magnesium, because of its unique characteristics and its certain ionic radius, will optimally bind or water will bind to it in what's called an octahedral conformation. And this octahedral conformation creates incredible stability in biological systems compared to calcium, even though calcium is also a two plus cation. So what does this mean functionally at the cellular level and within the mitochondria? So it turns out that cellular magnesium competes with calcium as well as other protons, a proton carrying, let's say, a one plus charge, or an amine that carries a plus charge, which is a, a nitrogen with hydrogens. And so magnesium will sort of outcompete, or should, with preferential binding to what are called anions, something that's carrying a negative charge that's found in our mitochondria, in the nucleus of our cells, and in the cytostolic fluid of our cells. Well, if we think about what's in the nucleus, well, that would be our nucleic acids that make up DNA and RNA. So it turns out that nucleic acids are stabilized by the presence of magnesium. Well, also what's critical is that magnesium forming a bond with an anion will also help to stabilize ATP. So the adenosine triphosphate that gets produced from mitochondrial activity through the electron transport chain will become stabilized more so in the presence of magnesium. So just like magnesium is helping to stabilize nucleic acids in the nucleus of our cells, magnesium is also stabilizing the adenosine triphosphate. And it's doing so in, so that the ATP that gets produced through the electron transport chain activity has a chance to get out of the mitochondria and be functional elsewhere in the cell. So all reactions involving ATP actually require the presence of magnesium ions. Magnesium ions coupled with oxygen atoms of the phosphorus groups help to protect the ATP from hydrolysis because basically these chemicals can get broken down pretty quickly if they're not stabilized by minerals like magnesium. So if we think about mitochondrial activity overall, one of the things that we can do as practitioners is to help optimize magnesium levels for people. So magnesium is intimately linked to various metabolic processes such as glycolysis, Krebs cycle activity, fatty acid metabolism, as I mentioned before, and it is critical for the stabilization of ATP within our mitochondria. So just as a quick recap, and we get into this discussion in much greater detail within the Mitochondria Mastery course, we know that magnesium is critically important for overall health. Most everybody needs a continuous supply of magnesium, which is best obtained from supplementation as well as a diverse diet. So daily metabolic requirements because we produce so much ATP requires a lot of magnesium. 
So increased stress in various forms can actually deplete magnesium. So healthy cardiovascular function, for example, um, as just one example, whether that is atherosclerosis, hypertension, risk factors for myocardial infarction, stroke, clotting risk, etc., are all worsened when magnesium is deficient. Now, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler, um, the course instructor for the Mitochondria Mastery course. I've been an integrative and functional medicine physician since the late 90s. I do a tremendous amount of speaking here in the United States, as well as internationally. I'm an author, educator, and practicing clinician. I've been a clinical educator for Great Plains Laboratory for many years, as well as Integrative Medicine Academy, which is the academy that hosts our mastery courses, including the Mitochondria Mastery course. I'm co-founder and education director for Integrated Medicine Academy, as well as Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds, which is a membership website for healthcare practitioners. And then in my own practice, I work with um, individuals on the autism spectrum, I've been doing that for a number of decades, as well as patients with chronic and environmental induced health conditions. I would encourage you to check out the information on the Mitochondria Mastery Course website. One of the things we emphasize in all of our mastery courses is thinking critically and always thinking clinically with regards to the content of, of each course, and that certainly includes the Mitochondria Mastery Course. More information can be obtained at mitochondriamasterycourse.com. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Mitochondria Mastery Course. Thank you.